Thank you. Wow. Uh, we'll begin in Hebrews, uh, Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. Uh, I can't repeat the message I shared because I want to tell the message, this message. And they're both building from the Resurrection Conference and our uh, intentional movement toward heaven. It's like just that offering. Doesn't that offering feel strong? I mean, who wouldn't want to give into that? Who wouldn't want to receive what that? It's like we're stepping out of the natural limitations of our life into the unlimitedness of heaven. I heard that song being sung in my spirit yesterday all day. You are, I'm limitless because of Christ. If we can step in Christ, we step into a, a whole other place. So uh, one of the things, let me see how to do this. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 4, and we'll go back to Acts 7. Sorry, Sam. But I, I'm going to read the I'm going to read the answer before the problem. This is reigning with Christ, and I want to talk about reigning in rest. And it has and I want to what God wants to do for each one of us is help us separate our spirit from our soul and allow our soul to be denied when it requires that so that we can live violently, victoriously in our spirit. I want us, Lord willing, next week, we'll, on Wednesday, we'll talk about the from friendship with God perspective, learning to hear his voice, learning to hear the voice of God. Then, Lord willing, next Sunday, we'll step into a real, uh, much more you know, practical struggle that we all walk through, which is from the place that Christ finds us to the place we try to become to the place that Christ recovers us from our trying to become something. Like Peter. He met Jesus, first words out of his mouth was, you depart from me, I'm a sinful man. First words out of Jesus' mouth was, don't be afraid, I'm going to make you a fisher of men. Then for the next three and a half years, he tried to prove he was something. Until he proved he was not anything but what he knew he was from the beginning, a sinful man. So part of our journey is learning what we are not so we can learn who he is. The unlearning is just as much, and we'll talk about that. So here's the answer. Here's the answer. Hebrews 4.11. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and joints and marrow and is discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there's no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account, give account. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Heavenly Father, I pray now that you would grant by Holy Spirit's gift and ministry all of us an encounter with God in such a fashion that we could place in our understanding. We could see with our eyes and hear with our ear and our understanding with our heart. We could turn to you in this place of rest, in this land of victory and triumph and overcoming grace. Lord, you've told us, you've told me, you were going to do miracles today. You were going to be restoring the weariness of the season, that you were going to deal with the stress-related illnesses, autoimmune issues, because so much has occurred as we've tried to hold our place in the midst of an of awful conflict. And you were going to do these healings and they were going to, uh, for the, the whole in endocrine, how do you say that? Endocrine system. Endocrine system. I just hear the word, but I can't pronounce it. Is that weird? <laughs> I hear it. 
No, no, Cammy said it's not weird. <laughs> okay, we interrupt this prayer for my <laughs> failure of the English language. I wish to God I'd listened. <laughs> but he's going to heal stuff. Yeah. All those things that have been worn to the end, the adrenal glands, the things that have been expressed. There's somebody at, online that's actually you're sitting in your pajamas and you want to be here, but you can't. And the Lord says, today's your day. There's a renewal. There's an awakening. There's a healing coming. Just receive it. Just receive it. So here's the deal. Here's the beauty of where we're at. In the land of rest where God has placed us in Christ, where he, sent, he sits and we sit and Christ sits and all of us are sitting while we're reigning, ruling in the midst of our enemies, while the, the outworking comes to pass, we are in a place of rest. The four powerful components, four or five, is that A, there is an, a relationship that we have with the living word of God, the logos. The whole sum total, the completeness, the big picture, the story, in the beginning was the word and word became flesh in Jesus. And when we allow that, and that's what Diana, Diana, thank you for stepping up and just calling us into our place of worship. Because sometimes our soul shuts us down and holds us hostage, hijacks us and won't allow us to enter into what is actually already ours. So the Logos is that relationship with the Word. And it says in uh, verse uh, 12, the Word of God is powerful and alive. It's, can you go to verse 12, Sam? It's powerful. It's alive. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. The, word, the idea of the two-edged sword is it doesn't take repeated blows to get its point across. It's a sharp laser knife. Yeah. Aren't you happy? I'd, I mean, one moment in the presence of God and hearing the voice of God can change my life forever. People, I could go through years of counseling and not hear what God could say in an instant. It's just that's the word of God. That's the living word. That's the voice of God. Voice of God is how we come alive. And the voice of God is what we do not want to deny when we begin to hear. But here we are now learning to live in the land of rest. It's been given us. It's ours. And here is our instructions on how to live in the land of rest. We... We, we let the Word of God have active uh, engagement in our being. And it is a living Word, and it goes, and it starts to separate spirit, soul, and body. And we're going to learn in the weeks to come, we're going to learn to celebrate the death of our soul. Somebody say, oh, thank God, I want that thing, I want it to resurrect, I don't want to keep that crippled soul living. And, uh, and that's not a negative. You will be so, you, because on the other side of the celebration of victory is a triumphant person who's not afraid to die and triumphant in the place that only Christ could have given anyway. But we'll, we'll, work, we'll look at some of that, and it won't be so scary sounding. But right now, let me say this. If the living word of God will come in and begin to separate even to the thoughts and intentions of my heart, only the word of God can call me to who I am and call me to who I'm to be. Only the word of God can point out to me my hypocrisy and then liberate me into identity. And in a moment. And in fact, the next thing that goes with and inside the word of God is that we, uh, we live as a people that understand there is no creature, no creation hidden from God. Everything is nude. Naked. That's what it's new, naked. When Papa sees you, if he, he sees you, not the one you want him to see. He sees the one who you really are. He sees you in Christ so he can welcome you in any, in any form, in any fashion. But he also sees you in the, the conscience, the depth of who you are. In fact, it says he's, he sees us, we're naked, and we're open to the eyes of him. Now get this, the eyes, open to the eyes of him, is a Greek word that would be used most often of the idea of holding an animal for sacrifice by the neck, ready to take it and, and slit its throat. So, have you ever felt like God do that to you? <laughs> Just like really bring you to a point of, of, of sheer nakedness, utter, utter recognition? Yeah. Now, I used to hear that very fearful because I thought, oh God, I don't want to ever be there. Now I just think, oh God, let me be there every day. Because it's not about me ever becoming something that God says, oh, I'm impressed with you, Steve. Now I'll answer your prayer. <laughs> it's me becoming who Christ is. Yeah. And I only can become who Christ is if I can let go of who I think I have to be. Yeah. It's only Jesus. Only Jesus. 
but, but, in, but in this brutal, beautiful, freeing honesty, to learn that I can come into the presence through the blood of the Lamb and through the veil of His flesh, and then I can approach my high priest, and then I can come with a true heart. It's so freeing. Some of you guys are carrying so many things you need to tell God, but you're afraid that if you ever heard it, He would push you further away. And it's a lie. It's a servant mindset. It makes you cower versus run into. Every, every invitation of heaven is to to, to break through our walls. Carrie was calling it. Did you hear her? She said, Lord, we want you to break through our walls. We want you to break through our barriers. We build these things up because life is awful. We put fences around our house because we don't like our neighbors. <laughs> we go through stuff that just teaches us, I can't trust, I can't yield, I can't surrender, I can't place myself there. So we build. And then the same thing that protects us, per- keeps God from us. So if we're coming into the land of rest, we're opening ourselves to a relationship with the Word of God that has the penetrating, separating force to even go to my thoughts and intentions and tell me what I really am thinking and what I'm really intending. And it's okay because I live in a relationship of nakedness and surrender. And now get this. You're going to love this. He, uh, but there is no creature hidden from His sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of Him to whom we must give an account. I don't know why they came up with give an account. It's logos. So as I come into a relationship with the word of God and I say, yeah, I hear, I believe. I think that's true. I think healing's for me. I think there's a future. I think God loves me. I think God hasn't forgotten me or forsaken me. Whatever it is we heard, that logos, we begins to work of work of liberation of our spirit, soul, and body. And we have to process. And some of it we see, we're going, oh, I'm not sure if I'll still be as welcomed here if I see that. Do you understand? When I was first saved, first a pastor at, at Grace Chapel, the Foursquare Church in Moore Park. And I had, in the process of just getting saved, not saved, I was three, four, almost four years old in the Lord. Cammie and I were just going to get married. And we just gotten uh, given the left foot of fellowship out of the ministry we're in. Because we were, we, were, we were taking hold of this message of righteousness by faith and the word of faith and the whole sense of what God has accomplished through, through Christ. And so we, we had in, I had in that ministry with others, we had arranged for Jerry Savelle to come to Ventura. And so the minist- that was still in place, but now I was in a new place. I was a, a now associate pastor, at a, at a youth pastor, worship leader at a church. And which was very much a part of this countywide. It was going to be an Oxnard Civic Auditorium. So it's probably 1981, because we got married in, in March, and I think it was January. And so the day came. We'd done all the work. Everything was in place. Uh, things had really expanded. I think Dodie Evers had, was doing the worship. And it came the time where, as customary sometimes, they wanted to welcome all the ministers that had been a part of this, uh, this calling this event together. And so uh, most of the you know, lead pastors were all up there, and somehow I got up there with uh, David Benefield, who was a lead pastor at Grace Chapel, and I had had a lot of involvement, but I'm sitting up there waiting for whatever Jerry Savelle was going to do to introduce us or thank us or recognize us. And I looked around and I thought, I'm the only assistant pastor here. And I just fell under such a fear and such a dread. I felt like all of a sudden, what are you doing here? I was going to be exposed. You're not a lead pastor. You're not a, you're not, you're not a senior pastor. What are you doing up here? And I, it, that place of sitting, I could not hold because my soul vulnerability was super exposed. So when I was given a place of authority, nobody told me to leave, nobody booed me off the stage. I mean, none of my fears happened. Does that, but it might as well have happened because I was not operating in any authority. I was operating in timidity. I was way in touch with who I was as a breached, broken man who did drugs from 13 to 19 every day. Don't recommend it. 
turns your brain into a colander. Everything you pour in pours out. So you have to really rebuild your thoughts. But I'm, I'm fragmented, feared, all this stuff. And I'm, and I'm just sitting there trying to hold myself. And I'm going, no, this isn't going to be. God, you wouldn't do this to me. You wouldn't bring me up to embarrass me and make me feel this awful place. But it was like the picture is that we have been given a place of reigning, but we don't have the soul capacity to hold it until God brings us through a process. And part of it is hugely an engagement in the word to which we recognize that truly his word alone is what's standing and I must surrender or submit or allow his word access to all of me, leaving me feeling naked and, tr and having to trust the one who's slaying me, but knowing that because it's all going to relate again to his word, he's speaking to me. It's a big circle. Jesus said, when, you're not going to be judged but by the word you heard. So there's this relationship that, you see, the disciples, when the, the rich young ruler who had done everything right and obeyed the law perfectly to the point where he'd become wealthy because that's what the law will do and make you wealthy because it's right living. It's good living. And he meets the Lord and he says, I want to have eternal life. What do I have to do? And Jesus said, well, you know the commandments? What are they? And he tells them and he says, well, I've done them all. He said, well, there's one thing. You need to leave everything and follow me. And he left. Not everything, but he left Jesus because his heart was sad because he owned so much. So the, he could not relinquish what he had. He, he gained the world, but he lost his soul. He had not the right freedom to let go. And the disciples, he, Jesus said, oh, it's hard for people who are rich and wealthy to get saved, come into the kingdom. And he said, well, then who can? Because we understand in our culture, in our traditions, and in our religion that this is a righteous man. This is a righteous man that walked away from you. And Jesus, without having to teach the whole lesson, was trying to say righteousness by your works is not enough to come follow me. And, Peter, and Paul later would have to say, I, I've decided everything that I gained of that righteousness, I decided was lost so that I could gain Christ and not be found having my own righteousness, but the righteousness that come from God. So Peter's looking around and going, well, we've left everything. I'm in trouble with my wife because I never come home. I lost my fishing business. We have no source of income. You're talking now about dying. I don't understand what you're talking about. I left everything. We followed you. What about us? And he says, in the, in the regeneration, in the world to come, in eternal life, you will receive a place of authority. You will sit in a seat of authority that will, give, that you will release both the sound of eternal life and a hundredfold blessing of everything you've given away. Which the principle is you don't really can't, you, you may have your destiny on that platform, but until you've died somewhere, you have no right on that platform. You may be given it because you're gifting, but you won't hold it because you do not understand that you do not hold that place by your merit. So you will be challenged on every level of merit that your soul is capacity. I gotta be, I gotta perform, I gotta pray, I gotta pray. You know, it's just so exhausting. I tell you, the law is like exhausting. You just go, ah, oh, it's too hard to do. God says, yeah, but you asked for it. <laughs> but this isn't law. This is an interactive living word. It's calling me to an identity with Christ. Christ is calling me to an acceptance of me and then a surrender and a yielding. And when it comes to it, I'm going to agree with Christ. You are who you are and you can do what you said. Seeing then that we have this great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. The, the two things that I have to do, it's the simplest things in day, every day, is to come into his presence and hold and bring, back, and bring to him the words he said to me. The, the reason his presence is because that's where he gives life and speaks. That's where we, we make a concerted effort to enter into his presence through the veil, through the blood, and through what Christ has done. And we stand there and we approach him. And then once we're there and we've, we've connected that we are indeed accepted, welcomed, and received. By faith. Yeah. Beloved, by faith. Yeah. What was the difference between you came, before you came up here during worship than when you were sitting? Yeah. Nothing. You just chose to step further into it. You activated. You made an intentional decision. All right, I need a miracle. I'm going up. So you had to have a level of faith reactivated and said, I'm going up. So 
when we come to this high priest, the greatest thing we carry is just our, what we feel he's told us, the promise he's made to us. And the more obscure and, you know, impossible, but yet we heard, delights his heart. Lord, you love me. You, you've, you've called me to this, and you've promised me that, and you've made this possible, and you're going to do that. And words, words. And the truth is, the reason we're doing that is, again, it's all about that logos. We're, we're, the only way we are going to be able to hold that place on that platform is to become so convinced that the words that God spoke over us is who we are. And the who we are that we know we are is not who we are when we operate in our calling. This is, I've, I've left, I've lost, I've forgotten, I've, I've forsaken. And now, in the letting go of that, I have received something eternal. And every one of us in this room one day will die. And when you die, the only thing you're going to take with you is what God said to you. Nothing you can capture on this planet can you carry with you to heaven. But everything God says to you is eternal and forever. And everything it's lo you've lost in order to learn is going to position you in a whole nother familiarity of heaven. Because heaven just does not run by this planet. Heaven runs this planet. Yeah. And soon it will be ran mightily by good, gracious agreement with Christ. Generous agreement with what he's done and doing. So we're in this holding fast our confession. The priest, the, 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 the rich man's walking away Falling, falling into dis discouragement and despondency. The, the disciples are going, you know what? Whoa. At least we're going to get something out of this deal. We're going to get a seat and we're going to get a place to eat. And, but then they can't rest either. So the first thing they go to do to Peter, Jesus right after that, is James and John try to position themselves to a better seat. And James and John go up and say, uh, actually, it was their mom. You know, moms. Oh, moms, I got a request for you. What is it, Jesus said? I want my sons, John and James, to have a seat on either side of you in the coming, your coming kingdom. And he said, wow. He says, uh, are you able to, looking at James and John, are you able to drink the cup that I'm about to drink from? And they go, Yeah. Bad, bad answer. No, you're not. But you, yeah. Yeah, I can do it. So Jesus says, like classic Jesus, yes, you will drink the cup that I'm about to drink. But I can't really give you these seats because there's the Father's privilege to give to whom he chooses. So we used to make this joke around 10, 15 years ago when we were learning the truth of what they got, which was not what they really wanted. You know, if, they, if, if it hadn't been that the rest of the 10 got all upset and jealous and envious over these two making the first move for the good seats? If they had been going, well, what did he say? What did he say? They go, well, he said, he said something like, uh, the, the seats are coming, but for now we're getting a cup. We got the cup. We got Jesus' cup. The Holy Grail. <laughs> the chalice. <laughs> we're going to drink from it. No clue what they're about to drink. No clue the suffering that they would walk through to, to say yes to God while everything was saying no to them. Oh, man. You, you, so, so you're in this. So, but the disciples weren't excited about it. They were jealous. They were envious. They were, they were saying they were indignant that these two had made the move before they did. And so then Jesus is having to talk about the, the greatest of you will be the servant who can lay down your life and the soul is wrestling. The soul doesn't understand that the way up is down. The victory is to be defeated. To triumph is to be humiliated. For grace, humiliation. It's just, it's because the soul of man will just sabotage us. I mean, so many of us have known the Lord for long enough to know that we ought to be, we ought to, be, we ought to engage ourselves. Instead, we're waiting to be engaged. Nothing impresses us anymore. We ought to have more access into the kingdom than we've ever had and enjoy Jesus more than we ever had. There is nothing in your life that's stopping you from enjoying Jesus Christ. And therefore, anything that is stopping you is an idol. If it's an offense, if it's a situation, a political party, it doesn't matter. Jesus Christ has made a way for you. 
He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is delightful. He is happy. He is thrilled at himself. All of heaven's thrilled about him. We are in Christ. Christ is in us. We can step inside of this. We can be like children staring at the cookie jar. Go, ooh, 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 ooh. I'm eating cookies again. Instead, most of us have gone on non-gluten diets, you know. I only eat the stuff that I've tested and made sure it's safe. I don't go on to those wild stuff. No, 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 no. No sugar. There's a lot of sugar in the kingdom. Happy thoughts, happy lives, liberation. So let's keep going on. So here we go. We do not, we have this high priest who can sympathize with our weaknesses, we're tempted in all points as we are, yet without sin. So Jesus goes, you know what, Steve? I mean, I feel, I hear this all the time. Heaven will say, just go ahead. You can say it. Tell me what you, I've told you. I go, yeah, but, but I've learned, forget the buts. I'm just going to tell you what you said to me. I am your son. I bring you great pleasure. You delight in me. I'm covered with favor. You've called me to partake of your nature, to bring your kingdom, your, nation, your people into your kingdom, into their inheritances. You've, op- uh, you've, you've made Isaiah 35 and Jeremiah 33 the landscape of my life. You've made Isaiah 60, 61, and 62 the unfolding of life. You've promised resurrection like Lazarus and illumination of the people. You've opened the eyes of people to see Jesus. My calling is to reveal Christ. My calling to you And I just will do it. And I promise you, your calling is unique to you. And if you will be but begin to utter it in the presence of God, it will come alive. It will come alive because that's who you are. You are not where you are. You're not what's happened to you. You're not what you're doing right now. And if you're in a funk, it's definitely not you. You are are alive. And if you, so I'll I'll utter that. And then he'll keep, he'll keep digging. He'll go, go further back, go further up. Pull it all. Bring it up. Yeah. Awaken. Let it come alive. And I'll do it. And I'll feel heaven go, that's it, my boy. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. And you see, I don't need you to tell me that. You're not going to tell me that. You're going to look at me and go, I know your life too long to know that anything you're saying could possibly be true. Just like they looked at Jesus and said, well, I've been so familiar with you. You grew up. You went to, you went to Sabbath school. You would grow up and be a farm. You know. But... I'm telling you, Christ is coming alive in the church Amen. of Jesus Christ. Some of you are going to wake up. Some of you are going to become something. People are going to go, what in the world happened? You may have to go someplace other people don't know you so they can receive who you are. But I hope not. I hope we could all go around and give everybody a free pass. Don't go to jail. Let's get rid of the jail cards. I'm not going to trust that person until they've learned something that I want them to learn. What do you want them to learn? I'm not telling anybody. God knows. I'm waiting for my husband to get a revelation. He's not. He's stupid. Talk to him. Tell him what's up. Say, okay, we won't get into marriage right now. Oh, so let's boldly come to the throne of grace. Boldly, boldly, boldly coming up, coming up, coming up to the throne of grace. That's where Father sits. In in the tabernacle of Moses and in the temple of Solomon, there was a mercy seat. Jesus came along, took upon himself all the sin, died, buried, raised from the dead, ascended, has cleansed the heavens and the very heavenly temple. And now Papa sits on a throne of grace. The mercy seat grew to a throne of grace. And that's who you are. See yourself. I feel that I feel Jesus come alongside him and put his hand behind my back. He says, come on, walk up here. He goes, you're in me and I'm in you. I'm over you. He can't see you, Steve. Don't be afraid. He only sees me. But come on up. Because you need to obtain some mercy. You need to find some grace. Come. And, and you have an encounter. That encounter will be worth more than anything the world can give you in any way the world would ever give it to you. And if you were to be given anything that is yet to be yours that you have not yet died enough to learn to receive, you will be like me sitting on that platform going, I just know they're going to get me. 
What are you doing here? You have no right to be here. Because that's the law. It makes me naked. And God covers me with his glory in my nakedness. And, and there's a relationship of raw honesty that I enjoy with Jesus. That I can be just transparent. Because I can't be sent away. But now feel the Lord. Come on up. Come on. I want, you to, I want you to let Father give to you mercy. I want you to ask for mercy. I want you to obtain some mercy. I want you to find some grace to help. I want you, I want you to be receiving this for your moment of opportunity. And I'll do it. And I'll always be changed, and I'll always feel the awareness of triumph and victory. And I will feel it, and I'll be assured of it, and I'll know it. And it took me many, many years to not go and expect it to be different outside. But I'll tell you what's happened, and it's happening. I don't have to have the outside change anymore. I've been in many moves of God that I couldn't hold because I did not have the character, not of morality. I was stinky morale. Stinky, self-righteous, holy, holy, holy. Take your dresses down, longer down here. Not then. No. <laughs> Be perfect, fast more, pray more, pray harder, pray longer, pray the right prayer, pray the right people. Peace of <laughs> it, it is not how your future comes. Your future is in Christ. Settled, sealed, and delivered. The only thing lacking is discovering and knowing him and having confidence that what he has done is completed. So you're in his presence. He's talking big stuff. Papa always talks big stuff. You can't go in his presence when he starts telling you you're going to take over the world for him. He's just huge. He's just large. He's glorious. And you start going, okay, I'm good with all that. I can't do any of it, but you can do all of it. So we're going to live in a place of glory and blessing and thanksgiving and, and just declaring and decreeing. I'm going to let you come with me. I want your word to come a hold of me. I'm not going to sit here and sit and, and analyze songs that people sing. I don't have time to analyze a song. I'm going to sing the song. I don't have, some of you guys are analyzing my message. Go for it. It will make no sense. Because <laughs> I'm sharing spirit to spirit. And you're not, your mind's like, I don't know. I didn't learn this stuff because, man, I was floating down the river of Nile. I've been tormented. I've been put in holes. You see, I, let, let, let me close. Oh, wow, it's so beautiful. The Word of God. I mean, he's, oh, the Word of God. Let it come. Come talk to me. Speak to me. Define me. Declare, de reveal me. Unveil me. Let me be naked and wholly accepted and fully clothed in your presence. Let me understand that there in this moment we're being known by each other and it's by your word you're knowing me. I'm knowing you. Oh, I love it. I love it. And I'm coming and I've got a high priest and I know it's hard and it's the only thing you're asking me. Be in your presence and hold your confession. Be in your presence and bless God with the truth that you've heard. And you're my high priest and you're going to give me grace and, and freedom to do it. And while I'm not being able to hold it, that's because I'm being liberated from an old man to a new man. Acts 7, we'll finish here. Take five minutes, Lord willing. Cam and I were walking on Sunday, after the Sunday, and it was so, so much light. There's so much. If you haven't listened, to the, there's stuff that was shifted during the resurrection yeah. life. It's just forever new. But we're going to keep learning it, growing it, discovering it. But anyway, I, I, I said this. Moses, the deliverer. He thought everyone would know it. <laughs> Instead, he was the one who would have to learn it. The gifts and callings are without repentance. And they're also without instructions. That's your part to become. Beloved, you are more than we think you are. You carry more than others we see. You have unique, intrinsic value that is no one can ever fulfill your place. But it means squat unless you find Jesus Christ. Because you don't work without Christ. <laughs> you may get glimmers of who you are in Christ, but if you can't possess Christ, you can't carry Christ. 
And that is a painful process. And some of you are in it, and you, you said, man, I'm just not going to participate anymore. <laughs> Don't. But why waste the time? Press in. Childlike. Acts 7, uh, verse 17. But when the time of the promise came, drew near, which God had sworn to Abraham, the peoples grew and multiplied in Egypt. Until another king arose who did not know Joseph. And this man dealt treacherously with our people, oppressed our forefathers, making them expose their babies so they might not live. At this time, Moses was born. What a great time to be born. It was told that if he had a boy baby, throw him in the Nile. And it was well-pleasing to God. So they, whoa, there's something on this kid. And he was brought up in his father's house for three months. They hid him. But when he was set out, Pharaoh's daughter took him away and brought him up as her own son. And Moses was learned in all wisdom of the Egyptians, was mighty in words and deeds. Now when he was 40 years old, it came into his heart. He had an encounter, he had a calling, he had an awakening, he he came into who his identity was. Though he had been raised to be another man. And he came in his heart to visit his brethren, which literally means he, did, he released, he turned away from his place as, a Pharaoh, as Pharaoh's daughter, son, and identified himself with the Hebrews. And the Hebrews 11 talks a lot about the, the depth of what he was happening. And then uh, he went to visit the children of Israel, and seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended and avenged him who was oppressed, and he struck down the Egyptian. Now here's the verse. For he supposed that the brethren would have understood. This is the key word. Understood that God would deliver them by his hand, but they did not understand. He was operating from the knowledge of who he was called to be without the ability to hold the calling he was called to be. He had not been undone and brought up in the presence of God. He had not been... He he stepped out and he thought, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll make a bold move. We're just gonna we're gonna we're gonna light the fire and we're gonna start a rebellion and uprising. And I know how to lead military armies. We'll get out of this whole Egypt stuff. I'm your deliverer. But instead, what happens? The next day, he appeared to two of them, two of them. I like that. And they were fighting and tried to reconcile them. He said, "Man, your brethren, why do you do wrong one another?" But he did not. But he who did his neighbor wrong pushed him away, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge over us? Do you want to kill me as you did the Egyptian yesterday? Verse 29. And at this saying, Moses fled and became a dweller in the land of Midian where he had two sons. And when he was 40 years past, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in the flame of a fire in a bush in the wilderness of Mount Sinai. When Moses saw it, he marveled at the sight, and he drew near to observe, and the voice of the Lord came to him, saying, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses trembled and dared not look. And the Lord said to him, Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their groanings, and I have come down to deliver them, and now I will send you to Egypt. This Moses, whom they rejected, saying, who made you a ruler and judge, is the one God sent to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel who appeared to him in the bush. And he brought him out, and they've shown wonders and signs. We'll pause there. Moses knew 40 years before Israel found out that he was their deliverer. And the only way he could hold the place of being a deliverer in front of Pharaoh is had to be chased by Pharaoh out of Egypt. You don't learn your victory in a greenhouse. You learn it in a cave. You learn it being chased by a mad king jealous of you. You learn it in being rejected and forgotten and neglected. Because only there do you find Christ. And if you find Christ, then you begin to become who Christ is. And then if Christ needs you to do whatever he told you to do, then when you do it, you'll do it with Christ. I heard two things in the prayer room from our intercessors. One was that God wanted a burning bush experience for everyone in this room. He wanted to awaken people again. And it wasn't until Moses who saw the bush turned to see it more intently. You see, whenever I come into the presence of God, I'm looking. Where are you today? 
What are you saying? Gonna, where are we going to go today? I'm not here to petition him. I'm done petitioning. I don't micromanage God. I let him manage me. Where are we going? What are you doing? Then I go and I turn, and once I go and I respond, then I hear the voice. But still I have a choice. I could refuse him who's speaking. That's what Hebrews 3 is. Three times repeats. See that you don't refuse him who's speaking. But then when he starts to speak, we start to engage, and the logo starts to take over. And we start having an encounter. He take off your shoes. Why is, why is this holy? Because I'm here. And a moment of God in your life is a holy moment. And that exchange is taking place, and then Moses is being recalibrated. A stuttering, non-observant, non-observant Jew who's living in another religion, another man's house, married to a wife who won't let him practice his faith. That's how God trains his deliverers. So you and I can be happy, right? We're probably in a good school right now. Whatever we can't control, whatever we wish we could have changed, whatever, whatever we're you know, ridiculed in our thoughts. If you can't stand in the presence of God, sufficient by his blood, then you're not going to stand in, in the presence of man. Because man isn't going to be sitting there applauding you. They're going to, if you're doing well, they're going to be jealous of you. And if you're doing bad, they're going to be accusing you. So you just got to find your place in God. And then each of us find our place in Christ, and we begin to be drawn together, and we all go, whew, this is really getting exciting. I don't need, I don't need your acceptance, and you don't need mine. I don't need to reject you because you don't take my place. My place is already defined. I have a place. I'm welcomed in my place. I'm going to give away what I have in the joy of the Lord. And we all start doing that. It's just crazy stuff. We can all walk out of here, go to lunch and change people's lives. We have nothing to fear, nothing to hide, nothing to prove, nothing to protect. We are free. We're on our way up. Everybody's going, oh, look at that rising star. We know we're going to fall somewhere. We're not impressed with ourselves. Beloved, the Lord said to me in this season, he said, I am coming to release my people. I'm sending sound and deliverance and liberty. I'm going to free people. But it's none, of your, it's none about you. You're Peter to me. You're Peter to me. You really can't do what you know to do. Therefore, now I can use you because you won't have to try to do it. Just stay in my presence and live in my promise. Enjoy me. I enjoy you. Let's hang out together. And then we'll, there's too many of my people that are caught captive Social media, they got unliked last week. They're shut down. My Instagram, nobody liked my pictures. The, the country's falling apart because we're going to get one president or another. Oh, God. <sighs> Take a big breath. <sighs> it's okay. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. And he has a plan. It's executed perfectly. Everything is turning around. God is redeeming the world to himself. Pharaoh thinks he's got free labor. Ha ha. He's about to lose all his wealth. Come on, guys. You're going to think. Pharaoh thinks, I'm building temples with you idiots. No. You're going to give me all your stuff, so I'll leave. We got to change our mind. And when somebody like Diana gets up and says, change your mind, get out of it. Don't sit there and go. <laughs> go. Run. Respond. Because that's how we break that. Bush, burning bush, turn, respond. Voice of God, reluctantly. Okay, let's have a continued conversation. We're going to walk our way into my future. I don't even want to be there anymore because it's not necessary for me to have it. Second thing. God is dealing with the orphan spirit over this region. The orphan spirit is the spirit of competition that rules over this entire region from Santa Barbara to Santa Monica. It's just a, it's, it's, it's an awareness. All of California carries it because we were born in the day, stole from Mexico, then became wealthy. We don't know anything but prostitution. We're, we're, we're disconnected, discombobulated. We're like... I've got all this stuff, but I don't have any ownership. I don't have any, I don't have any sense of oneness. I don't, I, don't, I don't know where I am. I know people want what I got. They always want to take what I have, but I don't even know what I have. And Jesus come and say, come here, come here. Let me give you a big hug and hold you deep inside of me. I mean, come on. Moses, three months old. 
Hey, Moses, we're going into a prophetic journey. <laughs> you're going to think you're an Egyptian for 40 years. Boo! <laughs> then you're going to run away from the people you tried to save and, and the people you once were a part of, and you're going to live in a, in, you're going to become a Muslim. Woo! I don't know. <laughs> you guys are just so religious on that one. <laughs> all the Christians. We're all going to get, we've got to see Jesus. If a Muslim meets Jesus, they're going to be saved. If a Christian meets Jesus, they're going to be saved. Anybody meets Jesus, they're going to be saved. And God will deal with whatever he wants to. It's his business. I mean, that was the 60s, right? This 70s, I got to say, everybody go, okay, here's a list of things you need to do. No, thank God. I just got saved. I just, everything started falling off, pursuing the one I fell in love with. So the orphan spirit is only dealt with in the secret place of the wilderness when God resolves the issue of who to, who's your daddy. You know that old movie, Who's Your Mama Now, Who's Your Daddy Now? You need to know that. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? My daddy's in heaven. And I'm accepted in him. And I'm loved in him. And I'm standing in his presence. And I can, that's the Logos experience. It's my daddy. Jesus gets the affirming word. This is my son whom I'm well pleased. Holy Spirit, come. Anoint him for ministry and service. Whoa, what a meeting. All right, let's go meet the devil. Because you got to meet the devil. Because the devil is going to meet you. Better sooner than later. Moses, 40 years, Jesus, 40 days. Jesus could do it faster than Moses. But the, I, but the basic premise was you become, I live by what I've heard God say. What God says is true, whether it ever shows up or doesn't. I am not defined by anything but what God has said of me. My identity, my inheritance, my rest is in this living word of God. And I'm going to live here. I'm going to live here. And it doesn't mean that we now walk in this like, you know, like everything has to get out of my way. Red Sea, get ready to part. No, you're going to be freaked out the whole journey. Because it's just your, the Lord's telling me to step this way. I don't, you know, it's, it's, it's a continued encounter because that orphan spirit wants to return to you. You don't have a right to be here. You sinned last week. You watch TV. You watch Netflix. You're on Amazon Prime. You listen to secular music. You voted for a Democrat. You voted for a Republican. It means nothing. Only Jesus Christ. Who is your father? Who is your daddy? Who is your father? And you're being trained in adversity to learn that. And it is a privilege. And for some of you, you're about ready to break through. You're going to be being called up to do things, and you're going to say, God, please, 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 please choose somebody else. I don't need that. I'm too much. In, I, everything's here. He says, I have got need of you. Get up. Get it going. And you'll go. But then you'll return back to your place of rest and fellowship and delight. Only thing matters is what Jesus thinks of you. Only thing matters is who God is. I stand up. Oh, shut There is... There's fatigue in the body. There's tiredness. There's woundedness. There's expended. The andro thing, all that stuff. The whole glandular system shot. The effort of man in Christ to make the earth right has expended most of people's faith and their hope and their love. They tried to deliver within their own resource, not knowing that they had to lose the resource that they carried. And now comes the presence of God to meet you and the voice of God to begin to speak to you and a calling of your sonship to come alive in you and the dismantling of the orphan spirit, the awareness that you carry gifting that people always want and they're trying to take and you don't know how to, how to hold your place and people are trying to use you. They, tell, they speak nice things about you and they want to get what you got and you've lived so defended and got all, your walls all in place and hold things melting because the glory one, the father of father, father of lights is saying you're mine and you learned it in the 
backside of the desert and the dark side of life. Nobody has to say to you, you have a right at this table because you've been given a seat by Jesus. Ha <laughs> ha, Shabbat. And you're stepping in. You're rising up and you're stepping in. You're going to hold your place because it's just where you are to be. And you're not afraid of what people think. And even if people tell you don't be here, you just walk away and say, I won't be here. But you're not changing who you are in Christ. Men may not accept what you bring, but they didn't accept Jesus either. Your identity is in Christ. You are one with Christ. It's indivisible. It's indivisible. Love cannot be pulled you apart from. You cannot be pulled apart from Christ. You are one with him. Shabbat. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, now bring the healing balm, the oil, the oil of anointing. It's coming upon your bodies right now. There's like a warmth and a strength and a fire even and a, and a wrapping in gauze. You know, and he breaks the yokes. There's yokes that are breaking. Mindsets and contraptions, curses, jealousies, envies, things you carried for years. You didn't even know where they came from. It's breaking apart because you are not an orphan. You are a son of God. Your eyes are opening and you're seeing again and your ears are hearing. Where you've, you've lost your dance, you're leaping again. Where you lost your voice, you're singing again. You don't need anyone to hear you to sing because God listens to your singing and the earth shakes when you sing. You carry a sound of triumph. You carry a sound of victory. There's water bursting forth from where you walk. Your desert's turning into a, not just a, 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 a kind of nice watered land. It's, not, it's, it's breaking up in wells of water and salvation. This is who you are. The Holy Spirit is the fountain of life. Oh, come on, you guys. He's so here. In the name of Jesus, we release. I declare the authority of his name. Be healed. Entercon system. Be healed. Autoimmune. Reboot. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, shut down the whole nervous system's uh, communications and reboot. Turn off the apps, turn off the apps, turn off the apps. God's a rebooter. Reboot. Awaken. Come back alive. Come back alive. Come back alive. Body, come and respond. Spirit of God, raise up the body. Make it work again. Shabba Baba. In the name of Jesus. Sickness that has now found its way through a weakened immune system. Loose the body. In the name of Jesus. Healing now abound. Blood circulate, feet be healed, eyes be healed. Oh, come on, receive your healing, receive. Let Jesus heal you, let him heal you. Shabba Baba, there's breaking, there's breakthrough, 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 breakthrough. The orphan spirit. You know that fear that carries you and, and, and causes you to live in a, in a readiness to be punished. Readiness to be exposed. Or, uh, 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 readiness to be told, why are you here? You have no right to be here. That thing is destroyed because the God who called you son and the spirit who fell upon you to identify your sonship is coming forth alive. And you're looking into the eyes of goodness and God. God's goodness. And he's smiling at you. You're my son. You're my daughter. Let go. That do not carry you. He's just like picking you up and pulling you out of the, the captivity. You've been marked. You've been set apart. Now you're being called out. You've been waiting for this day. It's awakening day. It's an awakening day. It's awakening day, but it's not the day to awaken to get the people to see. It's the day to awaken to, for you to see. It's your awakening. It's nobody else needs to see. This is your revival. You're going to carry a move of God. You are the move of God. God in you moving and you responding. You are moving toward him. He's moving towards you. That's a move of God. And you're not carrying a move of God because you've learned how to hold a place without anyone taking you from your place. 
and your place is in Christ. So say, I receive. I receive the move of God moving me to God and God to me to be one, indivisible, with unity and justice for all. Amen. <laughs> Lord, if the healing ministries can come up here, those who, and all the healing ministries, altar ministries, there's movement going. If you're feeling the presence of God on you and you're, you're feeling a move, come on up here. If you've not been baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in other tongues, come up here. Anybody up here can pray for you. There's just something happening. Move toward God. If he's finished the work in you, then just secure it and go, Lord, here we go. I'm going to practice this tomorrow. Holy Spirit. One last thing to do while we worship. And you can go after we sing this song, but let's worship Jesus. Jesus, we worship. You reign. You reign, Jesus. Nothing may change yet. Your, your soul is still stuck. Your emotions are still fragmented. Your, your, your body still hurts. But it doesn't matter because you've met eternity. The eternal one has said you are healed and you are victorious and you're a son and you're no longer an orphan and you're loved. And so we praise you, Jesus. You're our high priest. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Jesus, you made us new. We're new, new creations. Anyone, come on up for prayer. Let's sing. Carrie, lead us in some worship. Shababa, and then we'll go. Just worship Jesus. Thank him. Thank him. Come on, help her out. Pull on your love you, Jesus. We delight in what you've done and what you're doing. We delight in the clarity of your voice and the brilliance of your coming. We delight in the healing miracles and the endocrine system being made well again. We delight in our adrenal glands being refurbished and renewed. We delight that our autoimmune system is rebooted and it's no longer auto. It's now right working in the perfect will of God. It's not attacking itself. We're body, not attacking ourselves. We're not attacking one another. We are one in Christ. Yay! Healing! I'm a lover of your praise. I'm a lover of your praise. Yes, Lord. I'm a lover of your praise. We have a place. A place at the table. A place to be. I'm a lover of your praise. I'm a lover of your praise. I'm a lover of your praise. We love you, Jesus. We receive from you. You're welcome. Just pull Christ into your bosom. Receive what you've heard and let it be tangible. It's the logos that you're known by. It's the word of your testimony you'll carry. It's your inheritance. Oh, worthy. Let this be a sacrifice. Let me dedicate my life to worship. Change is taking place. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your my presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Higher. Going up. Now, Heavenly Father, I bless your house, sons and daughters of the Most High God, that each and every one of us, according to the riches of your glory, would be strengthened with might through your Holy Spirit in our inner man, that Christ dwelling in our heart by faith, we would be rooted and grounded in love, comprehending with all saints the width, the length, the breadth, the height, to know the love of Christ that passes all understanding filled with the fullness of God. Declare and decree the Holy Spirit is the sealer, the guarantor of the covenant and the promise and inheritance 
I declare the place prepared for us by Jesus is accessible through Jesus. And that you will build up and release and cause to be abounding the truth of who we are in Christ. And I release us into this day. Send us out in a way where we walk with you in the journey ahead. Bless the Israel meeting. Bless the cafe fellowship. Bless the debt rest of the day ahead of us. Thank you, Lord, for being Lord of all our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you. You can go into your day and stay engaged and be re receive prayer. Because I was made for love. I was made for love. I was made for loving you. Because I was made for love. I was made for love. I was made for loving you. We are lovers of your presence. We are lovers of your presence. We are lovers of your praise, and it's all we love.